Y'all, I'm gonna come clean and say it. I spend so much time planning things because it's fun. I love it. It's my hobby, but I don't always do the things I plan. Welcome, my name is Sarah and I love to teach you ways to stay optimized and organized and have fun at the same time. We're halfway through the year, it's time to get back on track, check in with your goals, and I'm going to teach y'all a very simple system that was taught to me by my seventh grade teacher. So Mrs. Dahl, I know you're not watching this, but thank you. It's a really simple system that will keep you motivated to stay on track and it only involves a few things. You just need uh, three highlighters, a green highlighter, a yellow, and a pink or red one, and a notebook. You can use the planner as well, but you can start off simple with a notebook. I'm so excited to share this system with you because it's something that has worked for me in the past and it's when I have to pull up the big guns. <laughs> with this system, I decided to take the leap and start my Facebook group. So if you want to join me on this journey where we get our life together in 90 days, definitely sign up for the Facebook group, completely free, link down in the description, and we're all gonna have fun together. My goal is to create a community where everyone hypes each other up, we stay motivated, and we keep each other accountable to actually reach our goals. Also, I wanna share a little bit of the backstory of why I am doing this now, and that is because I have shiny object syndrome. And if y'all don't know what that is, it's when you're chasing the next best thing. Two years ago, I started this YouTube channel. I started a blog, I started an Instagram, and it all spiraled from there. And then at one point I started a bookkeeping business. And then I started like a Texas travel Instagram account. I'm all over the place. Yes, that's how my brain works. But in the process, I have kind of like let my home just kind of you know, get gross, basically. I have decorations up in my living room from my birthday that was in February. My pantry is a mess. My closet is a mess. All of this chaos around me is creating chaos in here. So I decided to really focus on organizing and decluttering my home as well as checking in with my other projects because I'm Delulu and I'm not gonna like drop any projects. I already have a full-time job, but <laughs> that won't stop me. A lot of people already ask me like, how do you do it? How do you find time to do everything? And that's because one, I feel like I'm pretty organized. I find time to do what I love throughout the day, but I'm also sacrificing other things. And if you're anything like me, you might be in the same position where, I mean, I've focused so much on my career goals and my business goals that I've let my house kind of rot. I'm not proud to say that, but it's important to find balance. So that's what I am striving for this time around. I'm also wanting to get back into my fitness schedule because I feel like I've gained a lot of weight and that has put a strain on my health. So I need to find that balance, get in order, not leave my projects behind, but also just like not stay hyper focused on them. So this is how my system will help me and hopefully it will help you too. Any of the products that I use will also be linked down below in the description. If you use any of them, thank you so much. I get a little kickback for all of your purchases. So thank you so much for your support. And without further ado, let's jump right in. So I have this notebook from Erin Condren. It was just a gift from them. That's why it says EC Squad. But this notebook is the productivity layout. And the productivity layout comes with this open space here, some checklists down here at the bottom, then you have this wide open space, a checklist, and this small color-coded box. I absolutely love this layout, and actually 
It's kind of one that I already had in my notebook. Like this is the same productivity layout, but it's an A5 version. So what I did is I kind of did a draft of this thinking it would be my final draft, but I kind of changed these things around. And I did this like way back in like early April or March. So things have changed around and I've been thinking of doing this challenge for a long time, but I barely got into it. So now I'm going to just use this color coded notebook because I like it more. But of course, if you're doing the challenge, you can grab any old notebook, any dollar store notebook will do. I'm going to use my highlighters. I have my red, yellow, and green, or it's kind of like a minty color. These are the friction highlighters. And the reason why I like them is because they are erasable. If you mess up, if you change your mind, you can erase the color, which is really, really handy, especially when you're doing something like this. So you could use your mild liners or any other highlighter that you choose. But I like the traffic light colors, which is red, yellow, green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my headers with a thicker pen and just using this gel pen. This was a gift, which I really enjoyed. It doesn't skip. And I might use these dual tab highlighters because they're kind of like the Evolve colors. I know I'm overcomplicating things maybe, but you can make it as simple as you want. And I'm already using this notebook for my other projects. like my businesses so i use this erin condren ruler to kind of separate my 90 day challenge from everything else that's going on and these are the rulers you get with like any life planner purchase which now it's a stencil so i don't know if you can get the ruler but i have a whole blog post on this and i'm kind of using it as a guide because i was inspired when i wrote the blog post <laughs> And now I kind of want to use it as my guide. So be sure to check it out. It'll be linked down below. So right now, what I am doing and the most important part before you get started with any project is reflect on what is going on at the moment. So right now, I am going to reflect on different categories on my life. And this can be anything personal to you. For me, these are the most important categories and kind of the ones I wrote on my blog post. So you can use that to kind of guide you. But for me, it was just like these things are the ones that are part of my life at the moment. They're, I think, the most important categories for a lot of people. I just love like stars and <laughs> kind of evaluating my life at the moment. So I'm just going to use this stencil and this like bullet journal stencil kit I got from Amazon. I'll link it below. I am actually going to use a different pen for this. I'm going to use my mark on because it doesn't smudge when you write over it with a mild liner, which I'm going to use my mild liner to fill in the stars. So I'd rather not have any smudging with any other gel pen. You kind of get smudging, but not with this mark on it's kind of made for the mild liners so zebra way to go i love like star rating system if you don't like it you can totally skip this step and you can change it up for a different system just maybe journaling about those things but for me i like things to be tangible so that's why the stars work for me now I'm filling in all of the stars with how I feel my life is going at the moment. And home is like my biggest problem right now. Everything else is kind of going, but my home is just the one I've neglected the most. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to average out my stars to get an accurate evaluation on my overall life, how it's going so I get a little bit lost while I'm doing it. But I basically take all of these, add them up, divide them by the number of categories that they are, and I am going to get my result. And I have a 2.5, so my overall life satisfaction is 2.5 stars. And that was math telling me what it is. But of course, you can think of a different system yourself. 
it doesn't necessarily have to be this so this is what it looks like and I'm just gonna go in and journal a little bit about each one about how I feel in each category and for me the journaling aspect of reflecting on yourself is really important because you're laying it out there you're putting it down on paper not just keeping it in your brain for me just dropping things on paper escaping my brain is a really good exercise because I'm a very anxious person so seeing it on paper helps me kind of externalize it and this is something I worked on with my therapist so hope it helps you too especially if you have an overactive brain like I do and then now I'm just gonna journal about my whole life and it's just going to be very quick just kind of emotional because I am emotional as I write this because I feel so proud of myself like I've accomplished so much but at the same time I just feel like I can never get enough done and I know if you feel that way you know all the power to you because we're constantly doing so many things now I'm just writing like some main goals that I want to accomplish during this 90 day challenge and these are just like the main things that come to my mind the things that are like all over the place and this is what it kind of looks like and this is just like my main reflections page throughout my challenge this is my why this is a place where I can come back to now we're moving on to step two, and this is creating a brain dump. You can grab a scratch of paper, you can do it on the same notebook. I have it in my blog post, the power of creating a brain dump before you start any project. Pre-planning is essential for me because it just helps me put my ideas on paper and don't think about it too hard. So I created my brain dump on this separate no notebook and so I kind of did step two already, so I'm not really gonna do it on camera. I am going to move on very quickly to step three, which is organizing and prioritizing. I kind of did this brain dump a long time ago when I was thinking about this challenge. I didn't know when I was gonna do it, but I really needed to get things done. So some of these things are already outdated in this journal, but it's an important base for the things I have going on because new things have come up but a lot of these things are still unfinished of course so that's why I need this challenge to help me get it done as I mentioned I'm going to just break it up into categories and each color will be a category the first category for me will be my home it's what I need to work on probably the most and then comes my financial because I tend to be really irresponsible and overspend. So this financial newsflash is going to be really important throughout this challenge. Something I really want to focus on. Another big thing that I need to focus on is my health. Then come the other categories my business and projects which a lot of them are left unfinished so i'm gonna break this up into you know professional because i have other projects those are home projects luckily i'm a tenant i don't have my own home right now so i don't have to worry like on big home renovations just like decorating decluttering and things like that and then personal admin is a category where things like updating your insurance updating your passport or boring things like that. Relationships and self-care, I think, is the category where I least need the attention because I'm honestly like really happy with my relationship as is. But use these categories to your advantage. If you need to put them all on one page, do it. But I would recommend separating them each into its own page or subsection, like if you divide a page in two or anything like that leave everything to one page because throughout the challenge you want to come back into these and leave notes so i'm going to get started with this list marker by erin condren and i'm just going to use it to make my master checklist here i love these <laughs> list markers because 
you can use them to make quick checklists and for me i love my to-do list so if you're enjoying this video so far and give me a like so i know that you are enjoying it drop a comment and let me know what is your stance on making lists a do list will help you stay organized do you think that a list is a great tool for you to actually get things done or does it overwhelm you? Because I know that a lot of people have said to me, well, you know, whenever I make a list, I get overwhelmed. And I'm here to tell you that lists should do exactly the opposite. They're not supposed to overwhelm you. They're supposed to, you know, help you externalize all those things like get your brain cleaned up and kind of like for you to drop things from your brain and put it on paper but if they're overwhelming keep your list short i know right now you're seeing my list and you're probably like oh my gosh what is going on but honestly it works for me because everything that's on this list is in my brain right now and if i don't drop it i will not get it done so i am going to take a look at my blog post it's kind of like where i put in all my research and all of what i remember from when i was taught and then my own ideas on this we're gonna start prioritizing now we're in step three where we're organizing and prioritizing so I'm gonna grab my red or pink highlighter and I'm going to highlight three things. You have to highlight only like the most important things on your list. Try to keep it short and synthesized. Like you don't want to be giving yourself too many things to do right away. So you're going to just do three. I, I cheated a little bit. Oh my God, I am gonna do four but it's because the fourth one is a pretty simple task that I've been procrastinating since like December of last year. Now I'm going to go on to yellow and in the yellow, feel free to mark off three to five things. Try to keep it at three, but if you need to, you can move to five. And then when you move on to green, just mark everything else in green because those are like your least time sensitive tasks you do this for each of your categories and for each and every item you're not going to leave an item unmarked now step four means you're going to implement your 90 day plan what this means is you have 90 days you have three months to get this done so for your first month you're gonna do red tasks your second month you're gonna do yellow tasks and for your third month you're gonna do your green tasks now that you mark off what are your most important things now you can put them into perspective like in the month of june when my challenge starts i'm gonna break them down into weeks as far as like what am i going to be doing for each one of them and that'll help you just break them down and actually get them done and now i have travel so i kind of have to think about how i'm going to get this done and maybe this will change maybe as i go along my challenge i'll say hey i am feeling super super excited and i'm feeling like i can totally do this and i organize my pantry i don't know i have crazy moments like that i also have this planner but the, the bad thing is that it starts until july and i like how it's lined so i can kind of separate things and i'm gonna be doing a lot of color coding in here where i'm gonna be checking in so this planner was a gift go wild i'm gonna try to find out where you can find it so i can link it but basically this is how it's set up now i'm going to show you all of my categories i kind of did them off camera but you can see all of my other categories have a shorter list than the home list except for the business projects those are a lot what i found very helpful for me at least in the month of june is to get it all in one list <laughs> now that you organized and prioritized them now you can make a monthly list and i am going in again i am obsessed with list markers that's kind of my thing <laughs> so i'm going to take everything in red and write down a master list do you feel like that's double work 
I honestly don't think so because the exercise of you organizing your categories and things like that is for you to figure out what is the most important thing and what isn't. And then now when you're on your first month, you're focusing on the most important things. And that's because it's your first month. It's when you're most motivated. I can promise you like come the second month, you're gonna be like, so at least you got the most important things done, but that's not the point of the challenge. The point of the challenge is for you to complete it. But this whole process of writing it down in a notebook and then putting it down in like your regular planner will help you keep the list. So now I have all of my June's list, all of my to-dos here inside my planner and I'm gonna probably use my monthly view to write down my list so I'm really excited to get started. So wow, my to-do list may seem like a lot, but once I break it down per month, it's actually not too bad. I think that it's pretty manageable and I'm like super ready to hop into this challenge. I've already started a little bit of it. Follow my journey. I'm going to be sharing a lot of shorts where I share my progress. That's my way of staying accountable throughout this process. So definitely stay tuned. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more planning content. Hope to see you around. Thank you so much for being here and bye.